Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Calico. This was sent to me by AEG and is designed by Kevin Russ. Players are quilters competing to create the coziest, most beautiful quilts. Turns are simple. Sew patches into your quilt by drafting and placing tiles onto your personal board. Earn victory points by sewing on buttons, fulfilling your design goals, and attracting cuddly cats to curl up on your quilt. Let me show you how to play. So in Calico, uh, players will take turns until each player's quilt board is completely filled with patch tiles. The players will then count points for design goal tiles, cat tokens, and button tokens, and the most points wins. So on your turn, you must perform steps one and two in order. Uh, each player has two patch tiles in their hand. You place one onto your quilt board into any open space. Now, if you look here, uh, you have these uh, design goal tiles on your board. Uh, you choose these at the beginning of the game. There are six different ones it can be. At the beginning of the game, you reveal four and choose three. Player one could maybe put this tile here. Once you've placed a tile, then you check your quilt board to see if you've gained a cat token and or button token. If you do, you put the token on the tile, but we'll get into that later. Then, you choose one of the three face-up tiles uh, in the tile market. So you go, okay, mm, I want to take this one. You take it, and then you replace it with a tile from the bag. That's it. That's a turn. Now, where the game gets a little complicated is you are trying to accomplish certain goals. Uh, for one thing, you have these three design goal tiles, like I mentioned. Uh, these are long-term goals that may score points at the end of the game based on the six tiles that surround them. To score points, each design goal tile must be completed using either the colors or the patterns of the six surrounding patch tiles. You can complete it twice, once with colors, once with patterns, and receive only the higher point value on the tile. Uh, there's no penalty for not completing it other than not receiving points. So let's show you an example. This one, basically three of the same color uh, for A and three of the same color for B. So you could do something like this. Let's say by the end of the game you have three purple. Oh, they don't have to be touching, by the way. Um, so like three purple and three yellow. Now, this would complete the goal for color. And in this case, you would score seven points at the end of the game. Uh, however, if you, you can also do it with patterns. So instead of doing it with colors, you might be like, okay, uh, I'm gonna get three of this flower pattern and three of this burn pattern. This also accomplishes the goal. In this case, it's three of the pattern. And again, they don't have to be touching even. So even if it looks like this, as long as you have three of a pattern and three of a pattern or three of a color and three of a color bordering it, you've accomplished it. Now, if you manage to completely achieve the goal, let me see if I can make an example for you. Here we go. All right. This is an example where you've done both. Uh, oh, no, it's, yes, yes it is. Because <laughs> it's three, three of a color for A, three of a color for B, and it's also three of a pattern for A and three of a pattern for B. Then in this case, it's gonna be 13 points at the end. Now that's hard to do, but it is possible. So for this one, it would be, you would need three different colors to each or three different patterns to each. And if you manage to do both, you'll get 11 points. And then this one, you would need three of one color, two of another color, and one of another color or patterns. If you don't accomplish this, so let's say I had this for some reason, uh, <laughs> then this accomplishes nothing. It doesn't accomplish three and three of a color. It doesn't accomplish the pattern goal, so this would be worth nothing at the end. Other ways of scoring include the uh, cat scoring tiles. Uh, in this case, these are randomly determined at the beginning of the game. Uh, and so they also have different sides, as you can see. So this one would require you to make uh, three of this, uh, three in a row of either this pattern or this pattern. This one would require just six uh, of, the, of the same pattern together, it doesn't matter what shape. And this one requires a straight line of five of one pattern. So, if I put this here, look at that, that's three of that pattern, I can score a roomy cat token. So, you put that on here, and now these tiles have been spoken for. Uh, you can't use these again in another formation. And finally, there's button scoring. So in this case, they want you to put uh, a group of three uh, uh, patch tiles of the same color. 
So if I did, let's say I swapped these around when I placed them. Uh, in this case, that would be a group of three uh, for the green. So I would get a green button. So I could put a green button on that. And uh, here is a three, a group of yellow for three. Now, if you manage to do it for all six colors, you get the rainbow button, uh, which is also worth three points. But every time you do it, uh, what's also convenient about these buttons and patches is at the end of the game, you just flip them over. Tells you exactly how many points. Well, not these, <laughs> but these do. These are just worth three each. Now, what's also neat about this game is you these sort of tiles on the edges, you can actually use these. Uh, so, like, if I had done something like, um, let me make an example, like blue, blue, and blue, even though this is a tile on the edge of the board, that still counts. So I can place one of these buttons on there. That also applies to cat scoring as well. You can use any of these on the edges uh, to complete your patterns. Otherwise, that's it. You always have two in hand. Uh, you place one down, draft from the three, pick one up, uh, and that's it. And you just keep doing that until everybody has placed all their tiles on the board. Now, once you've placed all your tiles on the board, then you score. You uh, make sure you look at your design goal tiles. You look at your cat tokens. You look at your button tokens. Uh, whoever has the most points is the winner. Otherwise, whoever has the most cat tokens is the tiebreaker. But that's pretty much it. Just draft tiles and try to score th several different ways. And that's the game. So this is one of the most adorable games I've seen in a long time. The art is gorgeous. The cats are so cute. The visual look of the quilt pieces is really appealing. All this alone is fantastic. And then on top of that, the game is great. Uh, it's really solid drafting and tile laying. It's so simple. Just place one of two and choose from three. But it can be agonizing. I think what's really smart about the game is that the goals can be completed by either color or pattern. But if you do both, you get an extra bonus. If you're like me, that's going to make you constantly go, Ooh, I could be safe and just secure this goal. But, but, but if I wait and see if this one tile comes out then hot diggity damn i'll be a god that's how this game makes you feel uh with that also comes that great feeling of sort of burning your gaze into the opponent's skull of don't take that one don't i will kill your family don't take that one and that's not taking into account the color bonuses with the rainbow buttons or the cat rewards for the different configuration shapes of the specific patterns for the cats there are a lot of paths to victory with your placement but what's great about this game is you can kind of just focus on what you want to focus on and then if it works for other goals that's great otherwise you don't have to worry about it uh anyways the game may look cute and cuddly and it is cozy to play but it can also be pretty cutthroat and cunning at the same time which i love that that balance um there's also something in the rules i love that i don't think i've seen in a lot of other games i didn't mention it in the tutorial but there's an achievement system in this which I think is brilliant, especially for someone like me who loves achievements. Uh, if you win and complete cert if you win the game and complete certain objectives, uh, you can fill out a little like achievement grid, and it's very cute. But more importantly, it's dangerous for some ones who want to fill them out all the way. Uh, I think every single board game should come with a list of achievements. They're just silly and you know uh, easy to easy to provide. I think it's a very fun idea. Anyways, it's a fantastic game. Uh, I was excited for this one, and it lived up to the hype. It matches the quality of its adorable art with top-notch gameplay. I, I think it's fantastic.